Hello, this is Ron Clymer, and I'm setting this timer for 15 minutes. Now, this is a continuation of what we did uh, on the last video. This is for broker students. Wouldn't hurt you salesman student to watch it, but this is definitely broker stuff here. So if you're taking FREC course two, by the way, if you're just thinking about taking FREC course two, hey, Climber School of Real Estate be a good place to take it. And y'all realize that's where I'm from. I'm Ron Climber at Climber School of Real Estate in Orlando. Let me set this down out of our way. Now, yesterday, we put this pro forma statement, this operating statement up here on the board. We started out with a property with a potential gross income of $120,000. We said it had a vacancy in collection of 10%, which is $12,000. It has miscellaneous income of $1,000, giving us an effective gross income of $109,000. We said the expenses were $2,000. I'm sorry, did I say $2,000? The expenses are $40,000, but $2,000 of that is reserves for replacement. And that's given in the information and in the question, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. Now, that gives us a net operating income. We take the 120 minus the 12,000 plus the miscellaneous income, brings us to 109, subtract the $40,000 from that, we have a net operating income for this property for $69,000. Now, going back to the previous tape, and if you haven't seen it, I suggest you go watch that before you continue here. We had a price on this property of $627,300. That was the price that our investor had paid for this property. And he paid that because he wanted a 11% return on his money. Now, we also had him put $125,500 down payment from the previous tape. And he got a loan for $501,800. He had payments on that, mortgage payments. And I assume you all recognize the word mortgage payments is another word for debt service. He had debt service of $42,900. Now, this is new information I've given you here today. His debt service, and I just made these numbers up, but they would be given in the problem, on any problem you would have on the exam, was $34,000 interest, $8,900 amortization or principal reduction the first year. We're going to need to know that in a minute. Now, that gives him a before-tax cash flow of $26,400. That's the before-tax cash flow of this property. Now, if you recall, at the price we paid, $627,300, we had an 11% cap rate. And we had an equity dividend rate of, well, I forgot what it was. So let's compute it. Our equity dividend rate was I over V, the V being the investor's down payment, which in this case was $125,500, and the investor's income being the before tax cash flow, $26,400. Let me walk over here to my calculator and take the $26,400 and divide it by 125,000. Let me start over. $26,400 divided by $125,500 and that is a equity dividend rate also called cash on cash return of 21%. So our property yesterday had a 21% cap rate, excuse me, an 11% cap rate, 21% cash on cash equity dividend rate, so it has positive leverage. Now what we're going to do today is figure out our after tax cash flow and we've got to figure out the tax liability. Now 
I'm going to be erasing this information here in a minute. Our heroes in a 30% tax bracket. We've already talked about the debt service is 34,000 interest, 8,900 amortization, but and our land has an 80-20 land to improvement ratio. That is this particular property, this apartment building, 80% of the value is in the building, 20% of the value is in the land. And as you remember, land does not depreciate. Now, I'm going to raise this. We have to figure out the building's depreciation. Now, in order to do that, y'all remember the price? $627,300 was the price of the property. So when we bought this property with, for $627,300, we had acquisition costs. This would be given in the question on the test. This would be given in the question. So it says we had $20,000 in acquisition cost. This is the uh, survey, points, closing costs, things like that. So we're in the building for $647,300. That's the price that we have in the building. Now the IRS recognizes the fact that 80% of the value is in the building, 20% of the value is in the land, land does not depreciate. So we're going to take this number, 80%, let me walk over to my calculator and please get your calculator too. My calculator says that's $517,840 that we own that's a depreciating asset. It's a depreciating asset and because it's a depreciating asset and because it's a residential property and I just assigned it to be a residential property so it's a residential property it's going to depreciate over 27 and a half years. Now, if this was a commercial property, that would be 39 years, but it's 27 and a half years. So we're going to take this number and divide by 27 and a half. All right, let's see what we got. So that is 18,000. $830. Now y'all write that number down somewhere because I'm just about to erase it and we're going to need it again in a minute. So that's $18,830 in depreciation. So that's the depreciation and that's why real estate is such a wonderful tax shelter because of depreciation. Alright, I'm going to erase this. Y'all pardon me for not having more fancy equipment, but this is Climber School of Real Estate and we're just a budget operation here trying to give you affordable education at a price you can afford to pay. We probably got the least expensive broker class around. Check it out. We've certainly got the best. Here's the deal. We're going to start out, and by the way, we could start with the net operating income or we could start with the before tax cash flow, but I'm going to start with the net operating income. So if our net operating income is $69,000, all right, that's our net operating income, we're going to subtract from that the things that are tax deductible. Well, one of them is the $18,830 depreciation that we just computed. We're going to subtract that we don't have to pay tax on that money. Now also, we don't have to pay tax on the debt service. Is that right? No, that's not right. We have to pay tax on the principal reduction, but we don't pay tax on the interest. Now I had written up here before that the interest is $34,000 a year. And that would be given to you in the question on the test. I don't think they would leave you to figure that out. So we're going to subtract the interest. 
So we're going to subtract the depreciation. We're going to subtract the interest. Now, what else can we subtract? Well, uh, we've already subtracted the expenses, but when we subtracted the expenses, we also subtracted the reserves for replacement. Now, reserves for replacement, they're not tax deductible. So we're going to add those back because we have to pay tax on that money. So that's $2,000. And that information would also have to be given to you in the tax, in the questions. There's the only way you can know it. All right, help me out here. You got a calculator, I got a calculator. We got 69,000 minus 18,000. $830 minus the interest plus the $2,000 reserves that we're adding back. And my calculator says Yes, that's right. That's the number we have to pay tax on. Now, you remember I had written up here that our hero is in a 30% tax bracket. So times 0.30, our hero owes $5,451 in taxes to the IRS. All right, let's take his before tax cash flow which is $26,400 minus the check he's mailing to the IRS for $54.51. His after-tax cash flow is $20,949. All right, I hope that this is a little bit of a help to you. I wish I could do more, but you need to be able to compute depreciation, the interest would be given to you, the reserves would be given to you, and that's the after-tax cash flow, and also the tax bracket, the investor's tax bracket would have to be given to you, you couldn't possibly know that. Well, good luck. If we can help you at Climber School of Real Estate, give Kathy a call, 407-822-3926. Uh, if you got any salesman students you'd like to send to us, some of your peers that are taking a class online, uh, we're at www.climberrealestateschool.com. By the way, if you got any salesman friends that are taking the class online, we have a practice test on our website that I wrote myself that is very, very indicative of what's going on on the state exam. You've already discovered the YouTube videos, so send your, send your salesman students, your, your comrades in the office there to check that out if they're working on that. Good luck, stay in touch, thank you very much.